All right. Asset protection trusts in Utah, huh? So we're diving into how to protect, well, your stuff, basically. And Utah seems like they're kind of the experts, right? Yeah, they've really gone all in on this. You're talking a whole section of law, Title 75B, Chapters 1 and 2, if you want to get specific. But uh, we'll stick to the need-to-know stuff for you. Okay, so no law school lectures today. Just practical advice on how to protect what's yours. Love it. But got to start with the basics, right? Yeah. What exactly are we talking about when we throw around the term asset protection trust? So in a nutshell, it's a legal way to kind of put a protective bubble around your stuff. Could be your house, investments, even that vintage record collection you love makes it a lot tougher for creditors to come knocking if, you know, things go sideways. Like that rainy day funds, but on a way bigger scale. Exactly. And you're being smart about it ahead of time. And you're saying Utah's serious about this whole thing. Absolutely. They even have specific rules about, like, who's who in this whole trust world. You've got the settler. That's the person setting up the trust. Then there's the trustee like that responsible friend who manages everything according to the settler's rules. And, of course, the beneficiary, the one who benefits from the whole thing, maybe the settler themselves, family members, you name it. Right. So it's not about hiding money. It's more like strategic management, right? Exactly. And speaking of things people might want to hide from, like creditors, Utah's law 75B1302, to be exact, it's really clear that you can't just use these trusts to dodge existing debts. It's about being proactive, not reactive. So you can't just like buy car insurance after you already had the accident. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. So no last minute scrambling if you see a lawsuit coming your way. Not if you want that ironclad protection. Utah wants to see you are already planning to protect your assets, not just reacting to a threat. Makes sense. Transparency is key. So how do they actually make sure people aren't using these trusts for, you know, shady stuff? Well, remember that 75B1302 we talked about? There's this thing called an affidavit of intent. It's essentially a sworn statement from the settler that says, hey, not trying to pull a fast one here. This trust is legit. Wow, they really thought of everything. Yeah. What about things like child support or alimony? Can someone just set up a trust to get out of those obligations? Great question, and Utah addressed that specifically. Even if your assets are protected, the law 75B1302, to be exact, makes it clear. You can't use a trust to avoid things like child support. They've got safeguards against that. Okay, so it seems pretty fair. They've thought about preventing abuse. So how does someone actually go about setting one of these things up well it's not quite as easy as just declaring it unfortunately it's a whole process yeah and this is where an attorney who really knows utah trust law is essential right like building a house you don't want to diy it exactly and speaking of utah being unique let's talk about jurisdiction for a sec okay section 75 b19 basically says that utah courts they have exclusive say over these trusts exclusive meaning meaning utah makes the rules doesn't matter if you live in another state and your trust is in utah think of it like home court advantage so utah law is king when it comes to these trusts you got it makes choosing the right attorney even more important a hundred percent speaking of which let's talk about what advantages these trusts actually offer We've mentioned creditor protection, but it goes beyond that. So creditor protection, that's one thing. But what other advantages are there to these asset protection trusts? Well, picture this. You've worked hard your whole life. You've built a business. Maybe you bought some rental properties. An asset protection trust can really help make sure that all lives on, even if you know, you're not around to manage it directly. So it's about control then too, not just about keeping creditors away. Exactly. It's a powerful tool for estate planning. You get to decide exactly how and when your assets are distributed. Could even mean fewer estate taxes, and it helps you avoid those messy court battles, you know, probate. That's a big deal. Nobody wants to leave a legal mess behind for their family to deal with. Right. Plus, there's a certain level of privacy that comes with trusts, like a will, that's public record, everyone can see it. Trusts are different, they offer some confidentiality about your finances. More control, potential tax benefits, privacy. Sounds pretty good so far. But let's be real, there's got to be a downside, right? Some kind of trade-off. Well, yeah. Like any big decision, there are always trade-offs. For one thing, with most asset protection trusts, and this is important, they're irrevocable. You set it up, you can't easily just change your mind or, you know, suddenly decide to pull those assets back out. No impulsive sports car purchases with the trust fund then. Exactly. You got to plan carefully from the start. And of course, there are costs involved. Setting up a trust, maintaining it, that takes legal expertise. Which is why having the right guidance is so important. A hundred percent. 
you need someone who really knows Utah trust law inside and out, someone who can see potential problems before they happen and tailor the trust to, you know, what you specifically need. So if someone's thinking, OK, this asset protection trust thing, maybe this is for me, what should they be asking potential lawyers? Love that question. You got to go beyond the surface level stuff. Get specific. For example, ask about their experience, their track record with asset protection trusts in Utah. Have they actually set these up successfully? How many? What were the results? Really dig into that Utah specific experience. Right. Find out how they like to work with clients. Do they really listen, try to understand your goals and concerns? Or is it just like a one size fits all approach? Mm -hmm. Remember, this is your financial well-being we're talking about. You need to feel good about who we're working with. It's like choosing a doctor or a financial advisor. Trust is a big deal. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to talk about money up front. Ask about fees, what to expect. You don't want any surprises down the line. No hidden fees, that's for sure. So big picture, what's the one thing you want listeners to remember about asset protection trusts in Utah? We've covered a lot, I know. Legal terms, Utah codes, the whole nine yards. But if there's one thing I want to emphasize, it's this. Be informed. The more you know about how these trusts work, the laws involved, the good and the bad, the better decisions you'll be able to make. Knowledge is power, right? Exactly. Empower yourself with information. And hey, even if you think you've got it all figured out, talking to an expert, it's never a bad idea. Think of it as an investment in peace of mind. Like having an experienced guide to walk you through a maze. Make sure you don't hit any dead ends. So we've talked about asset protection trusts generally. But Utah also seems to have a particular interest in protecting retirement funds. Tell me about these retirement trusts. Oh, yeah. They're serious about protecting your golden years in Utah. These retirement trusts, they're laid out specifically in Utah Code 75B1201, and they offer a whole other level of protection for employment benefits, things like pensions. Think of it as like extra armor for your retirement savings. So it's specifically for protecting those hard-earned retirement funds. How are they different from the regular asset protection trusts we talked about before? Well, the big difference is this. Utah made retirement trusts exempt from some of the rules that other trusts have to follow. Like, for example, they can exist indefinitely. That means they can potentially protect your money for generations. Wait, so they could protect your retirement savings for ever? It's a pretty big deal. Shows how committed they are in Utah to safeguarding those retirement assets. It's about creating a legacy, not just for you, but for your family down the line. Wow. So what happens if someone wants to challenge an asset protection trust in Utah? Where does that even happen? Another good question. And the answer is simple. Utah is in charge. Remember that whole exclusive jurisdiction thing? That's in play here, too. Utah courts have the final say no matter where you actually live. So even if I live in Maine, but my trust is in Utah. Utah's rules apply. Got it. And what if someone says, like, the trust was set up illegally or something? Mm. They're going to need some serious proof. Utah law, specifically 75B1302C, it makes it very clear that challenging a trust, it's not easy. They need strong evidence to back it up. So it can be challenged, but it's definitely an uphill battle. You need good reason and probably a really good lawyer. Exactly. That's why setting it up correctly from the start is so important. Get that expert guidance. When it's all above board, it's way harder for anyone to question its legitimacy. Sounds like a well-built asset protection trust in Utah is pretty rock solid. It can be, but there are always a lot of details, things to think about. It's complicated. Which is why, as we've said, talking to an expert is so important. Couldn't agree more. So having an expert, that's key. But are there, like, certain situations where an asset protection trust in Utah is, I don't know, especially useful. You're thinking, right, it's not like a magic solution for everything. It really depends on your situation. But there are definitely some professions, certain life events where it can be really appealing. Okay, like what? Well, think about jobs where there's just naturally more risk involved. Doctors, they have to worry about malpractice suits. Entrepreneurs always navigating the ups and downs of the business world, even creative types, may be worried about intellectual property, you know? So anyone in a field where lawsuits are more likely. Exactly. And it's not just about protecting yourself. It's about protecting your family, too, making sure that a lawsuit doesn't derail their future. Yeah, makes sense. You can be careful, but you can't always control what other people do. Exactly. And don't forget those big life changes, divorce, inheritance, selling a business, things like that. There's often a lot of money moving around and that can attract unwanted attention. 
So it's about having that safety net during those times. Absolutely. Being proactive, protecting what you've built, it can give you real peace of mind. Wow, we've covered a lot today. Asset protection trusts in Utah. Who knew it could be so interesting? Right. It's a whole world. But hopefully, you know, this is a good starting point for you. Exactly. And remember, this is just the beginning. If you think an asset protection trust might be right for you, do your homework. Ask questions. Talk to the experts. Don't be afraid to really dig in. It's all about taking control of your financial future, protecting the things that matter most. Absolutely. Well said. From all of us here at The Deep Dive, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into asset protection trusts in Utah. Keep asking questions, stay informed, and we'll see you next time.